Hey, hey, I am here. I am a fan of the queers to so get used to it. How's that? Um, so yeah, good morning. I am a minute, a smidgy minute late because I was working with a client. And I also realized that as Allie Willis would say, I look like a ghost here. So let me get some lipstick on. Oh no, a corpse, she said. I don't know if anybody knows who Allie Willis is. Um, she was a wonderful uh, collector of kitsch and a songwriter. And I had the luck and honor to um, kind of be invited to Willis, stately Willis Mansion in, um, in uh, Los Angeles a number of years ago. What a wonderful trip. She is sadly gone. And pardon me, I'm just, you know, trying to make myself a little bit more presentable here, people. Um, I realized as I was on my coaching call earlier that I did not have my little uh, my little rims on my um, my glasses here. So thank you for allowing me to do that. Hello. There we go. Ah, how about some earrings too? Why not? Hey, Jen Bull, nice to see you. Uh, Janice, weather corporate pilot, Renee, all sorts of people showing up. Good morning, good morning, Carolyn. Uh, <laughs> what happens to our eyelashes anyway? I don't know. You know, I've always, I will say this, one of the few things that I've had all my life is long eyelashes. But so I just tend to do a bit of the Edie Sedgwick and put a bunch of, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, mascara on myself but um but yeah things change little little lady little lady stash was dealing with that anyhow good morning enough about me and my uh my um toiletry habits so good morning everybody beth from destination decluttered beth who is destination cluttered um trisha barkman hello from upstate new york i was in kind of upstate new york recently go to a wedding lovely area classy 22 is joining um pm 1128 good morning amanda so many nice, uh, it likes to see some familiar names as well as some unfamiliar names. So if we have not met officially before, my name is Beth. I am a decluttering life coach. Um, Destination Decluttered is the name of my coaching and my TikTok page and my website and all the, all the social media, you know, places. And um, I am here doing this TikTok live. I do them quite often, not regularly. I'm not a regularly scheduled person. I do schedule them. But what I will offer is um, I show up to help you. I do these TikTok lives. So I am here for you. Um, if you are struggling with clutter, if your home and life is not looking and feeling and functioning like you want it to, I am a decluttering life coach and I um, am here to answer your questions. Uh, I work one on one with clients. Sorry, trying to get my background there. I work one-on-one -on -one with clients um, on Zoom. I offer a paid package, but I have found, met so many wonderful clients through TikTok. So I show up here to help you, to just give you an idea of what a little bit of coaching would be like. Now, the thing is, is that when I do these TikTok lives, um, I am talking to, it's almost as if the hundreds of you who show up are in a giant auditorium. So you ask a question and I will answer your question. The neat thing is, is that your question will probably help somebody else because what I find through my coaching and doing these TikTok lives is all of us tend to struggle with the same things over and over again. We think that we're alone, but we're not. You may think you're alone with clutter. You may think that you're, you know, you're the only one who's overwhelmed, that everybody else's house looks better and you're at somehow at fault for not getting stuff together. I am here for you. Um, and what I will do is um, answer your questions. Um, ask you to join my mailing list, like my page, that would be cool. Um, so let's get into it. Spring Lake Gardening is saying, you came just at the right time. Here I am, the, the universe provides, right? Um, my daughter is just went to college. My house is mine again. How do I start? Okay, I love this. Um, Tyson Brown, I wish you could talk to my wife. Cool thing is, I will say, these TikTok lives are recorded and I upload them to the Destination Decluttered YouTube channel. Maybe you could tell her that this is what I do and she could listen to them there. But Spring Lake Gardening and everybody, where do I start? You start here. This is this is how I riff. This is how I in a um, road trip fashion, okay? So what I think about is this is where I am right now. I'm on a road trip, and if we saw on the other side of this, it would be like how I got here. I've done different things, good, bad, in between. Oh gosh, somebody's mowing their lawn. Um, and... I want to ask, I want to suggest to you, where do you want to go? Okay, where do you want to go? So before you start, what do you want your home to look like? What do you want your home to feel like? 
and how do you want it to function? Okay, those three things. Um, notice behind me, I have that kind of visual of being on a road trip. You're here, you want to go there, there's some steps in between. I will say this, um, I want my home to sound quieter than it is right now, so I am going to step away for like a second to shut my window, and then you can just see, I don't know, see what my background looks like. Ooh, check it out. Ah, there we go. Um, I live in suburbia, so somebody's always mowing their lawn, right? Um, so just notice that. What do you want your home to look like? What, do, what will make you happy to look at? How do you want it? What's, what, what's the amount of stuff you have in your home? Some of the stuff in your home, some of it's clutter, some of it's not. I say this, the clutter's the stuff that, that, that doesn't light you up, that drags you down. Um, and when you remove that and you decide what you want in your home and how you want it to look and feel and function, then all you are surrounded by is the stuff that you, um, that you love or that functions well for you. Okay, so notice that. Get clear on it, and then you know what, everybody, get get yourself somewhere to get your notebook. Get a notebook. Write down the thoughts in your head. Yes. Oh my God, I felt like I just did. What's this? Gregisms, right? You know. Oh, what is it? Anyhow, I'm riffing. I I am um, Gen X. I do pop culture references all the time, and I also entertain myself like nobody's business. So fun up here. Um, but what I want to say is up here is where it's all at, okay? Your ideas of what you want it to look like, your ideas of why I can't do it, the, the ideas of um, it's too late, the ideas of, oh, my gosh, I, I can't wait to do it. All of it is up here. Um, it really helps you. It really helps you to get some of those ideas out of your head and onto paper where you can look at them. So write down what you want your destination to look like, to feel like, to function like. And then at least you know what you're aiming for. So then you can decide what you keep, you know, as the clash would say, should I stay or should I go? Does it stay or does it go now? Right? And that all depends on what you want your home to look and feel and function like. All right. Good morning. Uh, what else do we have here? Uh, good morning, Leslie O'Leary. Leslie O'Leary. Nice to see you. Uh, what am I thinking here? Um, how do you go through clothes in the bedroom? I need to get rid of some, but how? Okay. They call me Nana. All right, Nana. You do it a little bit at a time. Okay, so here's here's an idea. So a couple of things I'm going to throw at you that are coaching concepts that I use with all of my clients one-on-one um, -on, -one, um, on these TikTok lives. Think about two things. Um, think about three levels of clutter, surface, stored, and sentimental. What you probably have in your clothing, I'm assuming, is going to be stored clutter. Stored clutter is what I like to say, and this is probably where my Boston accent comes out, is behind doors and drawers, not doors and drawers. Draws, Mrs. Tanetta always used to say draws. Um, but, but you know, it's like, it's like closet doors, it's like bureau drawers in your kitchen, in your bedroom, in your, in your bathroom. You have doors and drawers, okay? So what I wanna suggest is what you need to do, and this all rhymes, I like to make it fun and easy. So stored clutter behind doors and drawers, you have to sort it before you store it, right? All those ores. And the really thing is the fun, the fun kind of connector um, rhyme wise in that is or. Stored, door, drawer, you know, all that kind of stuff is, do I want this or do I want to let it go, right? It is sorting that. When you sort your clothes, when you sort any of this stuff, okay? When you sort any of this stuff, categorizing it, right? I got to do a video because I keep on doing this. I think it was from maybe Zoom categories name of something any gen xers remember this you know you kind of be in a circle of people and then you would walk around and it's like you would name something in a category like animals you'd find in the zoo go right and then if you couldn't think of one you were out of the circle and then you made it smaller you know i grew up in the 70s what can i say we didn't have the internet this is how we entertained ourselves right notice your categories of clothing nana notice you probably have the following you have the call you have a category called clothes i wear right now that's in circulation it's in circulation it's on my body then it's in the hamper then it's in the washer and dryer then it's back hanging in my closet and then you know lather rinse repeat right then the stuff that probably is jamming you up is going to be your clothes that you don't wear right now now there could be a number of reasons for you that you don't wear those clothes those are categories I don't wear these clothes because they're, they are my winter clothes and it's not winter. I'm um, outside of Philadelphia. I'm in the Northeast, East Coast, whatever I am, mid-Atlantic at this point. Um, 
So I have like my winter clothes are stored away. But I also probably you maybe have a, a thing of clothing that I don't wear now because I can't fit into it. It may be too big, too small, whatever. Just notice those categories and then you say to yourself, okay, here I am now. What do I want my, my home to look like? Do I want to fit in these clothes? You have a conversation with yourself. This is all about getting to know you and who you are now. Knowing who you were, even yesterday and in the past. Yesterday's in the past, all, and I use this um, road trip and driving metaphor all the freaking time because it takes the drama out of things. We all know how to drive, and it's so simple. You're in the driver's seat of your life. You can look in the rearview mirror and, and say, that's where I was, but today and every day, you're in, in the driver's seat, and I want you to be looking forward. Look forward to your future. Look forward through your windshield and say, I'm excited to get my life to look and feel and function that way. Okay, so is your future, do you see yourself wearing those clothes? Now, this is a cool thing. Your answer is up to you. It can be yes, it could be no, it could be I don't know. But giving yourself a ch chance to ask that question informs your decision. And decluttering is decision making. Decluttering is a life skill. No matter how old you are. I say It says, Nana, you know, I'm assuming you're a Grammy. Um, and um, just notice it's never too late to learn how to declutter. Okay? Because it makes your life better. All right. There we go. Rosalind, in, Rosalind Kimba says, for the first time, I joined a local Facebook page, free giveaways, recycling, and it's a game changer. Awesome. Rock on with your bad self. You found something that's working for you to allow you to make it easy to remove items that you don't need out of your house. Everybody, I recommend finding a way that's easy for you to get rid of things. If that means donating it someplace that's convenient, if it means selling it, if it means you know putting it in the dumpster, do you do you you make a decision that feels right to you okay i don't judge i always suggest that you donate it or give it away before it goes into landfill but you do you you make a decision and allow it to be easy to get those things out okay i'm trying to hold on right now because so so many comments they tend to whirling by um there we go spring lake no items on the floor on closets clean and fresh and spotless awesome oh trisha this is kind of a cool thing i've heard about making vision boards for other reasons would it, that be good for in decluttering yes i love this that you mentioned this because i i don't like I, I like some visual clutter but not a lot i'm a very visual person despite the fact that i wear glasses or maybe because i wear glasses and what i what has worked for me i don't do it as much in the past but in the pre in the pre-digital days, in the pre, um, what is this, the internet days, I made, I used to cut stuff out of magazines. I worked at a place that got a lot of catalogs and magazines. And um, I would kind of, you know, do things. Oh my God, that's so funny. Ah, this is great. So I, I would make um, a book. I, I, this is my, um, what do you call it? Uh, like vision board book. Um, I have three of them right here, and I pulled them out to show them to you. So this was literally from um, uh, from the year two, 20, 2002 on, even before that, actually. Um, and what I did was I would cut out things that I wanted, like, you know, kind of to my home to look and feel like, right? This is like the old-fashioned version. Here's a great thing. I, I'm so excited you mentioned, you mentioned this, Trisha, because I want to share this because it organically opened to this page. So check this out. This is the power of a vision board type thing. So back in, and I don't even know what year it would have been, because I, I glued it on here with like a glue stick, but literally easily 20 years ago, okay? I saw this picture in a magazine, right? See that picture right there? It's like a square, um, you know, uh, shelf, and it's got all these cool vintage, um, what do you call it? Uh, oh, that's too funny. It's got all these radios on it, so check it out. Look what I got right here. I get something, it's not the exact same thing, but it's still the same concept. And you know what the crazy thing is too? I just noticed in this thing, this specific radio right here, I have that in the other room. It came from my Uncle Chick's basement and my dad saved it and my mother didn't want it and I took it and it didn't work and my husband pulled out the guts and now it has a speaker in it. So notice that when you say, ooh, I like that, you can bring it into your life. OK, I'm excited to actually go back through those to see what things I kind of manifested, as the kids say. OK, but yes, get a vision. The clearer you are about what you want and you don't want in your home, the easier it is to just match it up. All right. Um, 
there we go. Tips on organizing temporary home office bedroom single male. Okay, yeah, what I would say is um, keep things neat and clean. Keep it tidy. Minimize the office space in your bedroom because your bedroom really wants to be um, the place that you rest and relax, okay? So really compartmentalize the office type things as much as possible. Um, the other thing too is, I know it sounds, this is what I'll offer. I always think it's kind of weird when people do like, um, if you're on Zoom, for example, if you're on Zoom and you see somebody's bed in the background, I just think that's kind of weird. So maybe you can position where you do Zooms where you don't see your bed. Um, also just maybe experiment with how much space do you actually need for an office? We live in a very mobile society now. And I say this because back in the day, like I have a client I'm working with. I work one-on-one -on -one with clients um, for paid coaching. And she has a big, heavy, old desk that she, her husband got years ago that was like a partner desk where it's so big that two people could sit in it. That is outdated technology. Nowadays, my office is pretty much anywhere where my phone is, where my laptop is, and wherever I can get an internet connection. So get curious about how much space you really need in order to do office things. And do they actually need to be done there? Could they be done elsewhere? Okay. Um, I love this. Rosalind says, giving away stuff to even random strangers, requesting stuff is fire. Yeah, isn't it fun? We recently had two big, heavy... Um, what do you call them, like buffet tables that had gotten really junky in the past 20 years that we had kind of used them and we don't use them much anymore. So this weekend, I literally put them out on our front step and I said, free table, take me. And they're gone. And I'm so excited, you know? Yeah, see somebody, Julie C is saying, I can't sleep in an office area. I do the same thing. I like to compartmentalize it because I want my bedroom to be private, to be simple, to be clean and restful. So that's why I find other places in my home to do the office -y type things. But you do you. There we go. Um, what else do we have here? I love this, that um, that people automatically, this is what happens, um, which I do, I so, okay, I'm glad I remember it. Yeah, see my Gen Xers, thank you for justifying that it's not me being a, you know, I didn't make these things up myself. Okay, um, just notice that um, Immediately, whenever these TikTok lives, I love this. And I want to thank everybody for being so supportive that you are helping out your fellow cluttered person. Even though you're saying, I have a problem with clutter and that's why I show up, you also have something to offer the world, something to give. And I love when I see the interplay between um, people who don't even know each other trying to help each other out. Every time I do one of these TikTok lives, a really cool group of a community of people um, immediately forms and I just love that. Okay, so thank you for the people that are answering everybody's questions while I am trying to get in depth and answer one question. I really do appreciate that. Um, all right, there we go. Amanda Woods, glad I stumbled upon your live. I need your help and motivation for decluttering for sure. All right, let me help you with this. So here's all the ways I can help you and motivate you. All right, and this is to everybody as a refresher. So here I am on a TikTok live. Um, I do TikTok lives um, frequently. Uh, and how you find out about them is if you like my TikTok page, Destination Decluttered, just like it and you'll be notified when I'm live, right? The other cool thing is, is that I also like to schedule stuff because that's how I make stuff happen. I was just talking to a, a client about how I get stuff done and it's like I schedule it and it's not arduous and it's not torturous. It's fun because when I schedule things, I get the stuff I have to do done and then I get to have tons of time where I just play right? So I schedule my TikTok live. So if you go to my TikTok page, like the front of it to like it, you will notice that there's um, a pinned video that says the TikTok live um, schedule from like August 28 plus. Now it's usually it's only about a week because every week my schedule is different. I love it that way. So I um, show up at different times of the day during my um, doing my TikTok lives. So I show up for you with that. If you get on the Destination Decluttered email list, it's a free thing I do. That's also another way that you can get support and motivation for your decluttering. Um, immediately when you sign up, it's all free, um, destinationdecluttered.com slash join. You get a free habit tracker. Check me out. This is mine. I, I restarted it because I kind of fell off the habit tracking wagon. I'm a human. I'm a human just like you. And I realized I wasn't drinking enough water, getting enough exercise and Boy, were my eating habits having too much fun this summer, right? And I started to just feel lousy. You get this free PDF of a habit tracker um, when you sign up for my mailing list. Um, but then you also get um, invited to a free monthly group Zoom call. That's, I do those. Um, and you will also get notified too when I am going to do TikTok Lives. I send that out to um, the people on the mailing list too. So it's Destination Decluttered 
facebook.com slash join. I see a couple people signing up already. Thank you. Um, and also the other cool thing is what else? I do a lot of cool things. I got to share this with you. I show up on TikTok mostly. Um, I do these TikTok lives. I do videos on my page so you can like and be informed by them. TikTok lives are then downloaded from here and uploaded to Destination Decluttered on um, YouTube. So like if you don't have time today, if you just ran into me and you're like, oh, this is great, but I got to go do something. This will be recorded and there's a whole TikTok lives. Um, what do you call that? Like a playlist on Destination Decluttered on YouTube so you can catch up on these. I, I mentioned that because many people, like a lot of people have told me that they find it helpful to put those on in the background while you're decluttering, while they're decluttering. So I offer that as a suggestion to you. It's worked for other people, it might work for you. And then the other thing that I do too is to me is the, the most fun and the most, the quickest way for you to get from being cluttered to uncluttered and decluttered and to just living a life you love is I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with people. So I do one-on-one -on -one coaching for a group package of um, uh, 10 weeks, 10 weeks, one hour a week um, in subsequent order uh, on Zoom. And all we do is focus on you, where you're jammed up, where do you want to go? How do we get there? I love using that road trip metaphor because this allows me to be kind of part, I don't know, like um, co-pilot and also kind of a travel guide. You know what I mean? Like a tour guide because I've been through this road. I started as a, a very cluttered person from a cluttered lifestyle and I've since changed that and I've used the um, life coaching certification that I have to also use the um, tools and methods that I use to declutter, you can copy and paste those into different areas of your life. So you're not just decluttering your home, you're decluttering your life, okay? Whew, that was a lot of talking, huh? All right, let me shut up for a smidge and um, see how I can help. All right, um, I love it. Somebody makes denim quilts and accepts jeans to build quilts, quilts for the homeless, that's awesome. Um, oh, yeah. Can you open the book to show us? Yeah, let me see what else I've got here. I'm in denial. Do I offer five-pack sessions? Nope. I only do 10 or more because I have other clients. I will tell you this. I have some clients that get the results they want, like never believe, in 10 sessions. Awesome. I have other clients who love what's happening so much that they just sign up for another 10-pack, another 10-pack. The reason I do 10-pack is because it's strategic. It's because you are going to fail. You're going to fail, you're going to stumble, you're going to fall, and you're going to get back up again. And when you do that, you're going to have support. Okay, so that's how I work. Okay, what else can I show you here? All right, it's, it's funny because I have some ideas here. I have notes to self. Like this was all before the internet, right? You know, I get ideas that I have. Like even check this out. Like see this page? Like I just think that's so cheery. Like right now, that's like now the color of my, my, um, my our kitchen is yellow. And I still love these colors together. So it reminds me too of like 20 plus years ago. That's what I liked. And I still like what I like. Not necessarily all of it, but some of it, you know, and allow yourself to change. Okay. Allow yourself to change. And what you liked back then was okay. In your past, in your rearview mirror, you liked and did certain things. Now you are here and you can say, what do I like now? And also what's going to make my, my future, my home, look and feel and function easier, okay? So notice that, all right? What do we have here? Yeah, thank you so much. Um, okay, AD, ADHD, nice, I get it. I get, I, I'm picking up what you're putting down. I always end up doing a biannual depression purge. Why am I like this? I don't have the answer, but you have it somewhere in you. What I wanna suggest to you though, is to just think about this. Everybody, this applies to everybody, whether you have ADHD or not. All of us have thoughts in our heads, they make us feel feelings, and when we feel feelings, we do certain things, right? So if you have a discouraging thought, you have, don't have courage, you pretty much stay stuck. You don't do helpful things. You don't do things differently to change. However, this is what coaching is all about, is to either remind you and, or, or, or reveal to you that you have other thoughts. You can have other thoughts in your heads that make you feel the heads, head, <laughs> that makes you feel better, and when you feel better, you do better, right? So get get curious about what your thoughts are. Write them down. Nobody else has to see them but you, you know? And what I will say is, if you have an unhelpful thought, this is, I don't know why I do this, I'm so, I, this, my house is so cluttered, all the stuff that discourages you and bums you out, just know that you can take some of the ingredients of that thought and go to the other side of your brain and say, I'm gonna stop thinking about that and I'm gonna practice Speaking in the opposite, 
right? What's an encouraging thought that I have that's going to make me have courage, feel better, so I do something different, okay? That's what I want to offer to you. I don't know why you do that. You deserve to figure out why you do it. So you can change it if it's not working for you. I you see. Here's the funny thing. I would not know. Like I always end up doing a biannual depression purge. That may work for you. That may be how you want to do it and the result you want. But since you have the little crying face, I assume it's not working for you. Get curious. Curiosity and love and courage and hope is where I'm at. I want you to be there too. You're probably on this side of the equation at the moment with a little bit of unhelpful thoughts, fear, discouraging, free, you know, again, fear, 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 stuck, you're stuck, you're not moving. That's okay. Know that there is on the other side and all you need to do is think about something different. You need to just change the way you think. This is why I approach my decluttering from a life coaching point of view, because it would bore me to no end to just show you how to fold t-shirts. Blah! What I want to do is show you a way of thinking that makes you feel different, so you do different things. You practice it while you're decluttering your home, and then you realize how easy it is, just like driving a car, to apply it to your life, okay? But we always start with the clutter. There we go. All right, so what else do we got here? Um, yeah, I would love a biannual purge minus the depression. Here's the great thing. I got to share with you. Yes, purges are okay. Yeah, when you feel better, do better. A little bit at a time. As opposed to that all or nothing, the purging, the, the letting it pile up and then doing it, learning how to not let it happen in the first place or to get it minimal. So instead of a purge, it's just kind of you do a little bit every day is great because then you're not wasting days on end working on your clutter. You've changed how you think about your stuff so you do different things. And not only to get clutter out of your home, but decrease the amount of it that comes in. Um, Bex is asking if I have a podcast or audio book. Here's what I offer to that. Officially, no. But you know what? All you need to do is, is go to my Destination Decluttered YouTube channel. Go to the TikTok Lives um, playlist. And every single one of those is going to be something that you can listen to and get help with. Okay. The background and what I do and what you see is inconsequential. What I mention and how I talk is like a podcast. I just happen to be on screen at the moment. The only time I will ever kind of do anything on screen would be, and you can imagine it right now, um, is say pointing to this map to say, here's where I am. Here's where I want to be. How do I get there? You know, this kind of visual I have behind me. Other than that, you can listen to the TikTok lives that are... Um, um, on my thing as, as like a podcast. Okay. Hope that helps. You're welcome. Um, my father has some mild hoarding. Is that something you help with? Jen, I want to be honest with you. It really depends. couple things. One is, and I take this very seriously. Um, I know my place in the universe as far as how I can help people the best. And being a decluttering life coach, I can help many people. I am a certified life coach. However, I am not a um, trained medical psychological professional. And I say that with all sincerity and love because I know from firsthand experience that hoarding can be an indicator of something that is trauma induced and it is more of a psychological nature that really needs somebody who is trained in that portion of it. Okay. I don't know where your dad is on that spectrum and maybe you do, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Um, but I will offer that is that I might be able to help him depending upon the level of severity. However, however too, and I want to say this again to everybody here who knows somebody in your life who struggles with clutter and stuff, is it's going to be really hard to help somebody who may not want help, who may not think they need help, who may not believe they deserve help, all the stuff, okay? So just notice that. I say this with 100% like... I grew up in a cluttered household. Both of my parents collected stuff. Um, we didn't have good routines when we were at home. My mother, you know, has a bit of ADHD. I don't think, you know, whatever. She was very busy. So our house was always kind of chaotic. I learned at an early age I didn't like that. And so I would try to take control of my own situation. So I would always like my, my home, my room looked cool. Like I decorated it really well, but I didn't have good habits as far as decluttering. So sometimes it's a learned thing. Um... But the other thing is, too, is that my mom um, still is cluttered. It took her 12 years, 10 years after my dad passed to, to allow me to help her with stuff. 
And even then, I went in as a daughter and I went in and did it for her because I realized quickly she wasn't wanting the coaching. She didn't want to change what she did. She, for whatever reason, I don't want to judge her. I'm just saying, your dad may not want it. But Trisha, what I will say to you and for everybody who has somebody in your life, again, who is struggling with clutter, and if it's somebody that if you look kind of in your in your windshield and you're looking down the road and saying, their stuff is coming to me if I don't do something, you know, there's my mother's house. Okay, all that stuff. When she's gone, I'm going to have to deal with it. Start making a plan for yourself. Start making a plan for yourself, for your life, about what you're going to do with their stuff if they choose not to deal with it while they're around. Okay, I am here for you. I am here for the people who are, are saying that they need some help simply by showing up at this TikTok Live. So I don't know your dad. If your dad need help, I would speak to him. But everybody, I'm Gen X. My dad has passed. My my mom is, you know, going to be around for a while, I, I think and I hope. But yeah, at some point, she won't be there, but her stuff will be. I already have a plan in place. I already have a plan and thoughts with myself, with my sisters, um, about what's going to happen. And it feels better to know that there is a plan in place that you can work towards. Okay? If Don't wait until the crisis situation. You know it's going to happen. Make a plan now so that when the emotions and the drama and the sadness of the person parting is there, you're not also trying to formulate a plan in the midst of grief. Okay? Just wanted to get into that because it's really important. Many of us have that too. And the other thing too is on kind of that that kind of circle of life type thing. We have people in our lives that are older than us that are struggling with their own stuff maybe, but they may not want to deal with it. Then there's us and we see their stuff coming. But we also have our own stuff. We are also of an age that there are generations uh, younger than us that we may be attached to, that we don't want to do what's happening to us, right? We want to deal with our own clutter and we don't want to shoulder, we don't want to weigh them down with our stuff. Right, So just notice, when you change your habits, your ways of thinking about clutter and what you do with it, it makes your life easier and it improves the lives of others. Okay? Oh, I love it. Annalisa is saying, I would buy a book written by you. I might do that. I might do like just a really simple book. I've been thinking about this. Very kind of like Amazon, self-publish. Because some of these things I think would really be helpful to just kind of look at. But the thing is, too, I also don't want to... Um, add too much to your clutter. But thank you for the encouragement. I'll think about that. Um, I appreciate that feedback. All right, what do we got here? Um, I want to catch up. There we go. Yeah, not alone. Okay, there we go. Yeah, I think he'll need a medical profession. He doesn't want it. Here's the thing. We all want our own autonomy, right? We don't want things happening to us, at us. So for, for better or worse, we often have to just honor their wishes. But that doesn't mean... Okay, Jen, that doesn't mean that, yeah, you don't, you couldn't benefit from figuring out what you think about clutter, what you want to do about it, about your own stuff, and then also having a plan in place for theirs. Okay, that's what I do with like one on one coaching. I will say this I would suggest that you, if you're interested in coaching, um, the first step is usually to sign up for a consultation uh, on my website, destinationdeclutter.com. I don't have any consultations at this point. Um, I am I am chock a block full at least for the next couple of weeks or so. But what I will say, you might want to try this, Jen, and anybody else who's interested. You know, like oh, I wonder what that's about. Like, what's the next simple, easy, low, low barrier to entry step? Is hop on my mailing list. It's free. Destinationdecluttered.com/slash/join, and you get a habit tracker, habit tracker immediately to start tracking your habits about clutter and other things. But then also, the folks on my email list are always the ones who get the first the good stuff first they get like when I was a kid we call it like first dibs right they get first dibs right so they will find out when I open up my um, consultation uh, calendar and they're the ones that will know before anybody else when I'm available for coaching okay it's free it's low-key I don't like to do salesy pressurey stuff I just want to let you know that that's out there okay what else do we have now um, yeah as Kim, Kim L said, 504, and make plans now for our stuff so we don't burden our kids with it, right? I love it. Tina Marie is saying, truth, I have plans for my mom's house. Uh, Mrs. Crentis, Ms. Crentis, nice to see you. Uh, uh, saying, um, oh, where were you? My in-laws are both hoarders. Us kids have a plan to hire a company when they are gone. Yeah, I get you. I'm, I'm kind of in the same with my mother because I 
There are very few things in her home that I want. And the reason I know that is because I helped her with it, but we also had a conversation about what she would like to pass on, etc. Okay. Um, Brassy USA is saying, my daughter needs this. I am old and have a pile of stuff trying to unload so she doesn't have to. All right. So here's the great thing. Brassy USA, if your daughter's on TikTok, let her know about my TikTok page. There's a whole bunch of videos about stuff. There's also one about parental clutter, all sorts of things. She can find me there. Um, I do tend to repost the videos from TikTok on Facebook and Instagram. I don't show up there a lot live. I don't. But what I do want to do is show the people that I, you know, who aren't on TikTok or don't go to YouTube that I'm there too. And then also, as I mentioned, my tic these TikTok lives are recorded and uploaded there. So if you're, you know, share it with your, your um, daughter and see if she likes what she hears. And I hope it helps. Okay. Um, what else we got? Um, I was always matchless with my home and then my house got burned. All right. I grew, oops, sorry. I grew up in a very organized house. My wife grew up in a hoarding household. She's learned a lot. Yeah. It's everybody's got, everybody's got where they came from and what they did, what they think and feel about that to, to come up with who you are right now. And I hope who you are right now is awesome. I pretty much know it is because you've, you've come, you, everybody, you, you all are here on this um, TikTok live. And the neat thing is, is that this attracts a lot of really good people. This is where I get all of my clients. With the exception of one, one client, one paying client found me on Instagram. Other than that, all of my clients come from TikTok. And it's a wonderful community of people. So you have good stuff with you. What I want you to do is save the good stuff, figure out what isn't working in your clutter and otherwise, and get the stuff that isn't working out of your home. So all you're left with is the good stuff. There we go. AC, how do I help my sister who is a hoarder and soon will have to move? Really good question. Um, what I will offer is, if she wants the help, help her in the way that you think is going to help her, but also have her, do not do it at her. Have her participate, get her permission, get her buy-in, um, and show up in an energy of compassion and love and curiosity and willingness to help her, okay? If you go in there judgy and and condescending and just check your vibe, okay? Check your vibe, right? And go at it and do it at a pace that works for her. Also keeping in mind she might have a deadline of when she needs to, to um, you know, get out of her place or whatever, but show up in the spirit of, you know, love and curiosity. That's what I do as a coach and that will probably get you so much more further than if you go in there being all judgy. All right. Um, cleaning my dad's house was overwhelming. It's great advice. Yeah. Anytime you're overwhelmed, just remember, chunk it down, chunk it down. Um, and what else? Ooh, too many things. Not too many, but just the right amount. All right. Um, uh huh. Notice. Okay. So notice K. K, you've done a couple of things right here. Just notice everybody. Notice you have a thought or that causes you to do something. I keep everything just to piss her off. Notice, you are doing something. You are keeping everything because you have a thought like, aha, I'm going to piss somebody off. Just notice that your thoughts are creating that action you're taking, which is to keep everything. Mm, just notice it. You can do something with it. You can change it or not. If you want to change it, you can. That's all I show up for is give you that sense of possibility. Okay? I grew up neat and tidy, no clutter, but I'm a clutterer got to change my habits. Debbie, Debbie, I love the fact that you noticed that and you said the word habit because so much of it is habit. So much of it is learned habits. So much of it is unconscious habits. When you become aware, when you say, hey, wait a minute, how did this table get cluttered? I would actually love it if somebody actually showed me the footage of when little people from Stonehenge are coming in and cluttering up, you know, it's like, and then so, I don't know what happened. I got it all clean and suddenly I have no idea. The next thing you know, you know what I mean? Those are all indications of just you've got some habits that you like cleaned off your table and then you started piling stuff on it again because you're in the habit of it. When you can stop your habit, you got a little little traffic cop. It's so funny. There's a pizza place down in Wildwood, New Jersey that it's like stop at Mac and Mango's, I think it is. It's a little guy, looks like a little Keystone cop. I'm always picturing him when I'm like, put put down your little stop sign because he's kind of cute. It's very low, low key. Little whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop doing the thing that gets you cluttered. Start doing this thing that keeps you e-cluttered. There we go. Um, there we go. 
Designs of DH, our house is not where I'd like to due to health issues, but getting back to organizing. I love it. Now, being organized is great, but what I want to recommend is kind of in an order of operations, and I think other declutterers would support me or other home organizers, is what I say is you got to sort it before you store it. So before you even organize things, you need to categorize things, right? You need to categorize it to see how many of a certain item you have. But then before you then find places to organize them, you need to ask yourself the question, um, do I need this or not? Do I want this or not? How many of these do I need? Do I use it? All those questions. Decluttering is a life skill and it allows you to get to know yourself better. Okay, there we go. Woo. How do I know what mail to keep? Um, is asking Kit Kat so cool? Uh, you know what mail to keep by what you get. Um, is it something that you can find the information on the internet? You can probably pitch it. If it seems important, you keep it. If it's like, ask yourself why you want to keep it. Okay, just notice that. Debbie, good morning from New Jersey. I'm in um, PA. You know, oh, Bobby McBobperson. Okay, but I spent money on it. Yeah, welcome to us. Welcome to the world. We all spend money on things. You're not, it's not, you, so many of us, the thing is, is you can say to yourself, but I spent money on it and keep yourself stuck with stuff. Or you can say, you know what? For back then and now and for the rest of my life, I will buy things. Sometimes they will work out. Sometimes they won't. Me hanging on to something that doesn't work out does not give me my money back, right? Just notice, it's a thought. All right, so whatever we have here. All right, all sorts of things. All right. Um, oh, there we go. Yeah, there you go, Jen. There you go. I see you on the on the, the list right there. I am glad you couldn't sleep this morning too. I've got a whole bunch of resources, as I said, and um, for, for you and for everybody. So uh, in case you're just tuning in, because I'm just looking at the clock here, my name is Beth. I'm a decluttering life coach, and I help you with what you're stuck with, kind of clutter-wise and otherwise. Um, Destination Decluttered is the name of my coaching. I'm here on TikTok doing lives often. If you're interested in when the next one is, you can um, look on my TikTok page after you like it, please. Um, and I've got a video posted that's pinned to the top there that shows the next one I'm doing. I'm not doing one tomorrow because I'm busy. I think I've got one on Thursday, do I, uh, Thursday and Friday because then it's a weekend and I love a flexible schedule. I keep, keep it flexible. Okay. So just notice that. That's where you want to get in touch with me. I also do, I have a um, email mailing list, destinationdeclutter.com slash join. It's a really cool place. Those people get first dibs on everything. And um, I also do one-on-one -on -one coaching, a uh, 10-week package, paid coaching on Zoom. I love it. I've got so many, I've got a number of clients now, but I do have room for more if you're interested. But you need to get on my mailing list first because I have no consultations because I'm so busy. Okay? Enough said. Okay. Notice all this stuff. So Carrie Ann is saying, I was in a bad relationship for 22 years. I bought so much to fill the void. There you go. Notice what you did. You bought stuff to make yourself feel better. Okay. Um, Jan's Playhouse. I started worrying about cleaning out my parents' house when I was like eight years old. Yeah, I found myself decorating my room and making a little fort in my room because the house was kind of chaotic, right? Notice that's where we were back then, whether it was eight years old, 22 years. That was then. This is now as the ABC song right goes. Just think about it. Here you are now. You got here by hook or by crook. What do you want your future to look like? What do you want your home to look like in the future? And the cool thing is, is your future is every minute past right now, right? You can start right now. You can start at, it's like 9.44 a.m. Eastern time where I am. You can start, oh, excuse me, it's 9.45. It literally just changed, okay? Whenever you're listening to this, you could turn off this TikTok live and you could start to declutter. I would love it if actually if you started saying, what do I want my home to look, feel, and function like? Because when you start with your destination in mind, it just makes it so much easier because you know what you're aiming for, right? But notice the things that got you here and decide if you want to change them or not. And you, you know, there we go. Yeah, see, how do you get over the fact that you're throwing away things that you spent a lot of money on? First of all, you got to say that I'm not throwing away. You can donate it to somebody. You can, you can be like, look at how rich I am Look at how abundant I am, that I had the ability to buy something and at all to see if I could use it. Some people do not have the ability to buy items to see if they can use it or not. How lucky am I to have this problem of clutter? Clutter is an abundance problem. Clutter is too much. Clutter is not like the just right feeling, like just that right. It's not lack. It's not just right. It's too much. You know I'm right. 
Notice how awesome you can be with your abundance to say, this isn't working for me, but I can be benevolent, I can be generous, I can, um, I can donate this to somewhere else where somebody else might, this might be the perfect thing they're looking for. There we go. Designs of DH, notice, and I'm working with a lot of clients now about this with Clutterwise and otherwise. It's like this kind of like when you've got a different chapter of your life starting and stopping is how do I want to redefine my life? Once I become an Epstein nester, I lost my routines and habits. The neat thing is, is if you think about it, um, you had habits and routines that were for when your nest was full. Now you can say, okay, now my nest is empty. What do I want it to look like? What do I want it to feel like? What do I want it to function like? And also, what do I want my life to look and feel and function life and support, create new habits that support those things, okay? There we go. Okay, Y2K bugging. Notice, everybody, notice these things. You've got a thought in your head that makes you feel a feeling, that makes you do a thing. I'm always afraid. Fear. Fear, unhelpful. Fear. I will need it someday. Thought. I feel like I'm drowning in clutter. All of that. I just want to offer it. There is an alternative. You can quiet down the voices in your head that make you think that and feel that way. Some deep breaths, some writing it down, some working on, I like to call it like quieting down your backseat drivers, right? Your backseat drivers are back there. You're in the steering. I always, it's so funny. I tend to go like this because I'm usually the, the co-pilot, but if I was the driver, I'd be like, shh, quiet down back there. It's like, they're just little kids, scared little kids in the back seat. Quiet them down, and then your co-pilot voice that says you can do this will finally have an opportunity to speak, okay? And thank you so much for people helping out stuff right there. You're not alone. There we go. Um, okay, Mama Dog Rocks, what if, I'm, what if I'm still surrounded by my son and my mom's things after they both passed? Well, first of all, I want to say I'm so sorry that they both passed. But what I want to offer to you and to everybody who's kind of in this similar situation, if you have stuff around there that reminds you of somebody who's no longer there. When I'm talking about clutter, I deal with it in three different levels, okay? You've got surface clutter, you've got stored clutter, and you've got sentimental clutter. What you're talking about right now is sentimental clutter. This is the stuff in your home that makes you feel the feeling because it tells you a story. And what I want to just offer to even just plant a very basic seed is the following, is just because you loved or love the person who is no longer here doesn't mean you need to love or keep their stuff. You could remove all of their items from your home, from your life, and they would always live on in your heart. So you may want to keep some things. It depends on you. But just know that they will always live on in your heart. You will never forget your mom. You will never forget your son. The stuff reminds you of them. So if you want some reminders of them, maybe take a picture. What does that story, what does that tell you? You know, so you look at the picture and you're reminded of them. You can keep their memory without keeping the stuff. I hope that helps. Yep, prosperity is a way of living and thinking and not just having money or things. Yes, Carrie Ann, and I agree with you. And the funny thing is, is we live in a capitalist society, so we don't hear that often enough. We are told everywhere, everywhere, all the time, including here on TikTok, that in order to make yourself better, happier, buy, buy this thing. Right. I mean, I do it in a certain way because I do offer coaching, but it's not a tangible thing. It's a mindset shift and it, it doesn't just last for the 10 weeks of coaching. It lasts for the rest of your life. OK, there we go. I love it. Jan is saying I'm good, so good at quieting them. I don't need it anymore. Um, there we go. Trisha Barkman is saying I realized I kept too many things to remind me of when my kids were little. A lot of people do that. Oh my God, they, they are so little. So I don't even have kids and I've had nieces and nephews. I remember being like this. And now they're in freaking college. Time flies, right? There we go. Okay, Linda Mosergear, my oldest son is 44. I still have his kindergarten artwork. You know what? How about this? Invite him over and ask him if he wants it. Go through it together. You probably saved it for him. Connect up with him. Use the stuff that you're saving for your kids. Connect up with them now and ask them if they want it. Their answer can be no, but why don't you... Schedule a time, schedule a time that would be fun to go through some of the stuff and you both, as we would say in my family, walk down memory lane. And then once you walk down memory lane and you have that wonderful moment to remember, maybe you don't need the piece of artwork anymore, right? Just think about it, all right? Just notice it. Yeah, um, there we go. 
Annalisa Pixel Pitbull, I love that you are having that conversation with your daughter about whether she wants a lot of little inexpensive things or intentionally purchasing things she really wants. That's a really good lesson to learn because I learned early on that I had an unhelpful thought. I was buying little cheap tchotchkes and stuff that I liked at a certain morning, but I had a secret thought that was like, I can't afford the big stuff. I don't deserve the expensive stuff. This stuff is fine. So just notice notice that there are thoughts behind what you do that make you feel a feeling, right? I love it. Um, ah, interesting. Heather Crow says, and from my experience, if they say no, give them some more time. My mom asked me and I said no. Okay, notice that. Here's the interesting thing though, Heather, and I will say to everybody, is I believe that decluttering is a life, life skill and a process. If you get comfortable getting saying, might I want this in my future, then you might be able to say, I may not, I might want it, but not now. Like you can have that convo. It's good. Changed my mind later and my mom had given it all away. Here's the deal. Um, Heather, everybody, it's at the end of the day, it's just stuff. It's just stuff, right? It's the stuff that's piled up in front of your car that's getting you stuck from just living the life you want, okay? Learn from that. Do something different. You know, the next time you say, do I want that? You can ping down to say, is that going to look and feel, and is that going to fit in my life that I want? Okay, there we go. Now, Michelle says better off worth than one nice piece. Sometimes that's true. Sometimes it's not. It depends on the person, but just notice what your motivations are. Notice the thoughts you have and the feelings you have. There we go. Baker Mama says, I'm a widow with five young. Disaster home. How do I start cleaning? Baker Mama, a little bit at a time. A little bit of time and with five kiddos, get some help. And it doesn't have to be paid help. I bet a friend would help. You know, you deserve support during this time. Ask for help. That's what coaching is all about, is being the help for people. Now, when I coach people, I don't come in your house and do it for you. I don't do anything for you except to give you the ideas in your head that you can swim around with and say, oh, man, that makes sense. How could I use that thought and change my life, right? But what I will say is getting help, I've had to do it. I've paid for coaching. I've gotten, you know all sorts of help, both paid and un. That's how we grow. That's how we change. Okay. So just notice that. I love it. Unspeakable calf. Rock on. Two days ago, I met my declutter goal and had my first guests over for a wonderful dinner. Everybody. Isn't that awesome? That's what you're looking for. I want a home where I can feel good letting people in, opening the door, you know, notice that that's what you want and go for it. Do the things to get you there and now then do it. You know, I need to do with stored clutter now. Hard to put things away when not room or have a home. It's so true. So Annalisa, Pixel Pitbull, notice that there's a balance because I always start with surface clutter and then stored and then sentimental because surface clutter tends to be easier. But also you notice that sometimes surface clutter is on the surface because there's no room for the stored. However, oftentimes you need to clear the surfaces so you have some place to then go through your stored clutter. You need a place where you can dump things out and look at it. You need a surface to dump it out on, right? So just notice that it's strategic. All of this is done with like strategy in mind. I don't do anything, you know, without really thinking about what the long-term thing is, okay? Um, Carly Rodriguez, same thing. Where to start a deep declutter? Start at the shallow end. Start at the top. Start at the, you know, it's going to get deep, but start with the easy stuff. Start with the easy stuff because you're going to get in the habit of just learning to ask yourself, do I want this or not? What is this? Do I want it? Does it stay or does it go now? Okay. And then doing the next, taking the next actions to, to complete that over and over and over again. It's like push-ups. It's like sit-ups. It's like starting lifting weights, right? Working out with weights, right? Start with the small ones. Then you get used to using those. Then you can go to the more heavy stuff. You know, then you get deeper and deeper a little bit at a time. You guys, it's not rocket science. I'm not selling you a, a magic bullet, as they would say in the advertising biz. It is so simple to be like a little bit at a time. Get yourself started and do a little bit at a time and keep on showing up and keep on showing up and keep on showing up. I will say the more you do it, the quicker you get there. It's just like, a, again, it's just like a road trip. I could drive an hour a day from Pennsylvania to Palm Springs and it would take me 40 days. I could drive two hours a day it would take me 20 days. I could drive three hours a day. You see what I'm saying? The more you show up, just the, the shorter amount of time it takes you to get there. But it's better to do some little action 
often than doing all or nothing. Oh, I'm not going to drive for five days, but then I'm going to go for 12 hours. That's exhausting. That is not sustainable. And that's not the way to approach any pack, any, any process or any result. Okay. Notice that. Um, Oh, funny. Yes. Beth Whitley. And I'm a Beth too. So you know what I think it is? It was, it was a model and I want to say it was like some random, like maybe, okay. Rachel Hunter, who I think was married to Rod Stewart. And I think it was like a VHS working out tape that was like, um, like a sports illustrated swimsuit model thing. You know, I'm going to be Googling that, right? You and me working out with whites. I don't know. It's just one of those things that sticks with you. I don't know. Gen Xers, this is how our brains work. But I'm, I'm, thank you for connecting. I know, isn't it hysterical? It's like, yes. I don't know. You know, I was wor- I was playing Othello with a friend the other day. And I kept on mixing my metaphors because I was like, where? I can hear diagonally. And I was like, no, that's the wrong game. I thought it was Survivor, you know. But that's that was, I'm the sole survivor. But here diagonally, I believe, is Connect Four. Welcome to my brain. I love it. Okay. This is how I rock. The firm. Okay, maybe that was it. Yes, Donna Dalla. Love it. Um, okay, Pastor LG, emergency move from host into one room apartment. For yeah, perfect declutter op. Any tips? Yes, you know what? Embrace this opportunity to really get clear on what is the what is the stuff you really want in your home and what can you let go? Because the sooner you can live with less, and not less like in a lack sakes, but get to yourself to your level of just right, the easier it will be for you to move anywhere at a moment's notice. Um, I've played that game with myself. We're not moving anytime soon. I love our home and I love where we live and all that. But I've said to myself, if I had to move, would this make the cut? Okay. The other thing too is you may inadvertently bring too much wherever, if, if, if anybody's moving and I got to say, I'm only on for like another two minutes because I'm hopping onto a consultation shortly after this, but I want to leave you with this. You will most Decluttering is kind of not a lifelong project in like, oh my God, I'm going to be doing this for the rest of my life. But you will start to see the things that mean something to you at a certain point in your life. And you check in with that. Does that mean something to me now? If it means something to me now, I keep it. But then in the future, that may change. Just notice that it is like the occasional touching base with who you are, who you were, who you are, and who you want to be. Okay, there we go. Mishi is saying, I'm listening and throwing out saved magazines under my bed. That's awesome. Yes, Half-assed is better than no-assed at all, right? Unspeakable calf. Sometimes doing something half-assed is better than nothing at all. I also say myself to, that, that if you're saying I'm too tired, five minutes. Set your timer for five minutes. Do something is better than nothing. Do it tired. As I just got a wonderful um, testimonial I'm going to be posting later today on my website from a client I just finished up with. And she found what helped with her to counteract I'm too tired was do it tired. You can do it tired for five minutes, okay? There we go. All right, I'm signing off. You guys rock. Sign up for my mailing list. Like my TikTok page. I will show up again to do a TikTok live. But you've got this. You are on a journey, my friends. You are the driver. Define what your destination is and drive towards your dreams, okay? I love it, Mother on a Mission. You rock. You guys are so good. I will see you on Thursday. All right? Bye. 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 Where's my note? Bye.